During this month's live stream, Ashes of Creation doubters rejoiced as our friendly neighborhood creative director was stumped by an unexpected question. Okay. With that we have our first question from Rufian. They want to know about ranged weapons, uh, with it, which is what will be the differences between a crossbow and a regular bow? And I think we've talked mm. about short bow versus a long bow. Yeah, we but... don't have we don't have crossbows. Um... <laughs> I do want to ask a follow-up question in regards to you, because you stated there aren't crossbows, but we have sold crossbow-looking items. Are those considered short bows? Uh, or yes, how? those would be those like would crossbows. be considered those would be considered skins, um, and they. Um, so we we. That's a good question. Let me check into that actually, because I don't know specifically what you're in reference to. All right. Um, and I would want to make sure I'm giving an accurate answer. So I will look into what that was. Right. Yes. Hello. Is that you, Lord Sharif? Uh, sorry. I was just wondering if we're still gonna be going forward with this whole. I think that's fair. Yeah. I don't think that's a bit. I. I really. I don't think this is a big deal. Uh. You know. Yes, of course we are. Just keep making content about thin air, and that paycheck should come any day now. Oh, <laughs> that's a relief. So at least. Uh oh. But before we get into that, our patrons and I would love for you to grab yourself a Ten bag, yeah. because today I want to talk about the deal with crossbows. Do they exist? Do they not? Uh, what about the skins in the past? I think that crossbows, like, this is like, I'm going to just give you guys my take one fucking minute into this video, is that I think that they should have crossbows. You want to know what the best implementation of a crossbow is? Valheim. The Valheim Mistlands crossbow is exactly what I would imagine a crossbow to be. Massive, big dick damage, really long reload, Expensive ammunition, but again, massive big dick damage. I also think that it's not a big deal if you just sell crossbow skins and it just makes the bow look like a crossbow, but it's still a bow. I, I don't think either one of them are that big of a deal because that's effectively what WoW is. WoW has crossbows, but they're just bows were part of Apocalypse. Is the facade finally beginning to break down? Or does all of this have a reasonable explanation that we can use to convince ourselves this game is not a scam? Well, as it turns out, Mr. Sharif immediately released a statement clearing everything up with a solution that should please everyone. And I want to discuss okay. this with you all today. Now, with all that bollocks out of the way, let's, let's begin, begin, shall we? <laughs> so before we go over Steven's statement, okay. I just want to quickly explain why I waited a week before actually touching on this very easy to clickbait topic. You see, ever since November Steven last year when we game. got our first look at Alpha 2 in a multiplayer setting, all social media for this game is absolutely infested with negativity, even more so than usual for an obvious scam MMO. I think this is Well, I think the reason why is that the gameplay doesn't look very good. It doesn't look like everybody thinks like any time that you see gameplay for a game, if it's not as good as Elden Ring, it's bad. Is it as good as Genshin Impact? No. Okay, it's bad. That's just that. That's just that's what people think, and it doesn't mean that like the game won't be fun to play, but that's what people are going to say. That's what they're going to think. It's because people who have been following the game since that Want big rise so in interest oh, back be, in 2020 when Peon released that amazing viral video about- What about me? About the project, the video that actually got me into- To be fair, it was really Lazy Peon that did it. Like, I just watched the video. Yeah, I mean, I, I did just kind of watch the video. The game, these long-term viewers are, are starting to realize that Ashes of Creation may not be for them. Between the open-world PvP and the more yeah. tab-target-focused combat style, they no longer find the game appealing. And that's perfectly okay if you are one of these viewers, but still can- This is always what happens, and this is what I said. It's the MMO paradox. 
The more you know about a game, the less excited you are for it. The less you know about a game, the more excited you are for it. Because you could be anything! I don't know what's in the box! I have no idea! But then as soon as you have an idea of what's in the box, do you not act the box isn't that exciting anymore. Because you know what's probably going to be in. It's going to be one of like five or six things, and it's like one of them is like kind of good, but the other four suck. So that's kind of what happens. Continue to tune into. That's the why everybody. What, what's the MMO everybody's most hyped for? Oh, it's the fucking ad, the, the Riot MMO, the one that nobody knows anything about. Nobody. There's no gameplay for it. There's no fucking idea for it. There's no like information about it. There's no screenshots. Nothing. And that's why people are most excited for it because I guarantee you the hype for the Riot MMO will go just like this, because that's what happens with every single one. It's the same as, like, this is, this is why I tell girls never to do nudes for OnlyFans. Because after people see it, then they don't wonder anymore and they're not as excited. But before then, they're so excited. They're like, oh, this is going to be great. I'm going to buy the new set. I'm going to subscribe for another month. I'm going to keep going. But the more they see the less they want it. That's how guys are. And that's how people are with MMOs. I've seen it happen. To both things. Videos because you enjoyed listening to me ramble on. For starters, you guys are gods and I cannot express how thankful I am that you enjoy my ramblings. Uh -huh. But there is most certainly a subset of these people who, instead of moving on with their lives, they've been so butthurt by the dreadful decline the MMORPG genre has suffered lately that they've attached themselves to this project and constantly make hate threads and unironically bash the project in bad faith. The reason That's why I, I don't understand. Actually, I do. I think that most people that shit on Ashes of Creation are all already so invested into another MMO, they view Ashes of Creation as like competition. And it's like, what if Ashes kills my game? What if what if my game that I've spent $2,000 worth of microtransactions and whaling in like Lost Ark, what if my special, my special boy mount skins aren't important anymore? then I would have just wasted the last 10 years of my life. So that can't fucking happen. This game is going to suck. I waited is because I knew this crossbow situation would be brought up many times as a brand new, fresh it's a avenue gotcha. to berate the yeah. game. So I wanted to collect the community's thoughts about it before extending Steven's official statement. There's a beautiful thread up on the Reddit right now going over the point of the live streams, the impact they had on this community, mm -hmm. and obviously addressing the crossbow situation. So I will base this initial segment around that thread because Reddit user Sanic Explorer has articulated it perfectly, far more perfectly than my smooth brain could ever come close to. So we'll start with Steven's statement. Crossbows were a stretch goal as a weapon type back early in the project, around 2017 or 2018. And when we did our apocalypse testing, we included that weapon type as part of the combat testing. This is AI. It's fucking AI. However, along with the potion launcher, we decided not to support the additional animations or VFX and design. Pretty soon, they're not even going to have to do the monthly videos. They just fucking turn this on and it's done. Work for Ashes and discontinued the development of those weapons. Um, there were skins available in the apocalypse testing period that were purchasable with embers. I have asked the community team to provide emails updating users who purchased those specific skins during apocalypse of the inapplicability of those skins in ashes going forward. They will be refunded the embers to their account. Now, ashes of creation so has been in forward. Apocalypse testing. Okay, so they're not doing crossbows? Okay. They will be refunded the embers to Dead their Dead game. Now, 
Ashes of Creation has been in development for nearly six years now. The yeah. apocalypse period was admittedly a rough one that lost Intrepid a bit of faith, but as Mr. Explosion rightly states, APOC was not a commercial success. There's an amazing anecdote buried in the live stream from Kevin back in 2019, going into detail about how APOC helped Intrepid design the MMORPG, and I want to splice a clip in here to give you guys some context. We launched on multiple platforms and then we also have our own patch or downloader installer on the site. Of yeah. course this is our it's testing ground for the MMO. Right and so all of the things that we were able to learn as far as optimizations and squaring away all our account services and back end, this was critical. Yeah. So yeah. this has helped us immensely. He further goes on to explain uh, without APOC, uh, the results that we saw in Alpha 1 would simply have not been possible. Intrepid it was a playtest. Yeah, I get it. Sure. Makes sense. Competing with multi-million dollar companies who release games as quote-unquote alpha, but in reality, they're already they're finished. They're pre-alpha in reality products. We don't know this for sure, of course, and I will remain adamant that APOC was not the correct choice at all. But I will say I was mm. very impressed with how their servers sure handled the Alpha 1 launch period. You can, of course, see this for yourself with Asmongold. I actually agree with this, and I think that was one of the things that was the most astonishing to me, that whenever we did that Dragon Raid, and there had to have been fucking 80 people there, there was pretty much no lag. Because I'm going to be honest, whenever uh, Steven was like, yeah, so uh, they're going to have, we're going to have like 100 v 100, like 250 versus like, I don't know, 250 and like maybe 500 v 500. And I'm like, uh, okay, yeah, okay, man, we'll see about that, you know, but it worked. You can see the video. It, it's working. VOD if you want an organic experience of yeah. that, but a true highlight of their feats are shown in the follow-up live stream showing off the intense mass PvP. Yeah, this was, was something that badass. I've not witnessed in an actual third-person MMORPG for... Oh, I forgot. <laughs> and Intrepid's only experience with networking, patching a live client, and any kind of live service prior to this was apocalypse so uh, there must be some yeah. correlation there going back to sonic's thread he states that very few people actually played apoc and the skins that were sold back then yeah were i think shroud played it and i watched him do it but i didn't even know what ashes of creation was at the time and i was like uh, oh they're trying to do a br but with like wizards and shit shroud play PUBG. I, I i had no fucking idea about any of this maybe a couple of dozen people half a decade ago. So Steven's confusion during the live stream when it's the question was brought up really? and his follow-up statement are perfectly acceptable from any kind of customer service standards. You can't expect a full refund of your money back here. This isn't how it works. Even in real life, or at least here in the UK, you would be offered store credit in a situation like this, which is the equivalent of Intrepid's embers. Sonic continues to explain that it's simply not Intrepid's responsibility to constantly keep us as a community informed of all the small changes that are happening with this game during its open development. If it was, and if they did, we'd have important things like a full list of weapons or an understanding of their current node system plans, and we'd probably know exactly what to expect from Alpha 2. Uh -huh. I see a lot of rising frustrations from the community members about Intrepid keeping us in the dark about certain things, the functionality of certain cosmetics, for example. I see it again and again, how on earth do these cosmetic freehold buildings that we're purchasing actually work? How do these pets and mounts actually work as skins? And I think the reality- What do you mean, how does it work? You get on it. Well, you never played a fucking game before? How do you think it works? There's some sort of building mode in the game, and there are alternate versions of existing structures that have skins that you can buy. Like, are you fucking stupid? You just buy the mount, and then you ride... What do they think it's gonna do? Oh, if I ride this mount, I'm gonna be able to uh, cut trees faster. No! What, what game has that ever worked with? 
not gonna do probably that. is the intrepid are still designing the core systems that all these question marks are involved with how many times steven has come out and said uh, they're not willing to show or talk about unfinished systems is well within the hundreds at this point yet people well, that's good they shouldn't because if you tell people like i have an offer to play something early and i told the individuals that i spoke to i said if it's not ready and it doesn't look lit don't let me play it because people will see it and they will say this is fucking garbage and they will quit and they will think that it's bad i remember the alpha one test for ashes of creation people went in and they were like bro this game isn't finished at all this looks like just a bunch of bullshit there's tons of stuff that's like not done the quests aren't ready the character movement isn't working nothing is ready the combat is it's it's not ready guys and they were furious and i think that it sounds bad but like almost the alpha one was bad for ashes because people saw the game and they saw it wasn't ready and they actually had like a frame of reference for once that they could look at the game and say like this is bad and they just went with it man that's what happened we'll still demand answers for questions that are simply not ready we're still yeah. in early open development with significant monthly updates on important systems and mechanics. It's not like Intrepid are being a closed book here. Interestingly, Mr. Explosion was the guy who brought us the question that revealed our full list of artisan professions during the AMA okay. last year. So thank you for that one, sir. Which brings us nicely back around onto the actual point of this video, the crossbows. And I'd like to propose something to the community and <laughs> Intrepid, I suppose. Right. With us learning about the removal of crossbows, I'd love it if you all asked during the Q&A segment for a full list of the planned weapons for Ashes of Creation. I think that would do us. It's also, you got to keep in mind that they said they're not going to do uh, crossbows on release. There's a chance they could do crossbows afterwards. There's no reason why that couldn't happen. So it's like, yeah, they, they can't fucking just put everything into the game on release. That's how it's a live service game. All a favor and alleviate a lot of confusion when it comes to expectations. Now, with all the serious business out of the way, we actually learned something else very interesting related to weapons as well. And I want to discuss this next. With crossbows now being confirmed not to exist in the MMORPG, it has left a few people upset. And we'll talk about this in a moment to conclude the video because I have some pretty strong opinions about this. Oh, but the interesting God. takeaway from this whole debacle is Drama. that it turns out portable potion launchers are also discontinued. Thank fucking God. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. That's a super soaker. Bro, that looks like a covenant weapon from Halo 1. Or the carbine from Halo 2, but they took off the front of it. Does it fit in the game? It's stupid as fuck. What was the last time they had post portable po throwing potions at somebody? Gauntlet? Well, I was a huge advocate for these because they sound pretty damn unique as a weapon type. That kind of dumb. like a rifle, grenade launcher, or maybe even a fantasy. There's plenty of things that are unique. that you. It's like, oh, I have a wheel... And it's like a really big sword, and it's so heavy that I have to have it on a wheel, like a wheelbarrow, but it's a sword on instead of a wheelbarrow, and, and it, I bring it over to people and I hit them with the sword. It's like, this is a dumb fucking idea. That's why nobody uses it. It's because it doesn't work see shotgun at the same time, creating some interesting implications for technology in this highly anticipated MMO. However, streamlining yeah. weapons down to a roster that makes sense for a setting for ashes and cutting down the overall headache when it comes to balance is probably a positive. Remember, they confirmed during the Ranger Showcase uh -huh. that each of these weapons have their own skill trees. Part of the plan with each of these weapons is they'll each have a unique skill tree associated with them. Um, to differentiate them not only in terms of feel, but also in terms of mechanics. Therefore, it is probably- Yeah, because it, it's hard to balance a crossbow. Like a longbow and a shortbow, it's hard to balance those against each other on its own. 
probably a good thing for the overall balance of the game. I am an advocate for less is more, and I'd much prefer a small collection of well-made, well-animated, and well-balanced weapon types than a whole bunch of shallow garbage that ends up not being used. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> 64 classes. Now, potion launchers are not completely removed as a concept because Steven did clarify a little later that they're still planned as Ashes of Creation ship cannons. This will probably extend to some form of siege cannon as well, alongside the typical sieges that we've come to expect, like trebuchets, battling rams, and of course, ballistas. Yeah. Which brings us round to our conclusion. Ballistas are basically just giant crossbows correct? Yes. So Stephen, my good man, are you telling me over the 2,500 years that the dwarves were stuck in Sanctus with no magic whatsoever, they didn't develop the technology to design crossbows? My immersion, bruh. Listen, in my opinion, crossbows are a very important part of that dwarven fantasy. Having a stout, shredded out the wazoo dwarven ranger wielding a flimsy little bow uh, not only feels like shit, but also looks like shit. I understand this So he thinks that dwarves should have crossbows. I feel like crossbows, were they long range? Because, like, I don't know this. I know the difference between bows, and I know how a crossbow works. They were short range? Yeah, I don't know. Crossbows were, were mostly short range. Then it would make sense for dwarves to have them. Because they're in, like, enclosed areas. I don't know, man. I think, as I said, the crossbow from Valheim, the Mistlands crossbow is the best iteration of a crossbow that I've seen. I think that obviously the dark and darker crossbow is pretty good, but I, I don't really like it that much. But I do like the uh, the Valheim one decision was based off of strelining the roster for balance and reducing the overall work the animation team need to yeah, do that's with your always highly what's complex happen. weapon animation systems. But hear me out. I think it would please almost every single Dunir and Nikua Ranger if, as a racial trait, you let them transmog their long or short bow into a static Dunir or Nikua themed crossbow sure. instead, having an animation set specifically for the two dwarves that suit that more rifle-like heavy repeater style. I get that it's not viable right now for the launch of Alpha 2, and I also understand that crossbows don't function like bows do. However, it is a game after all. Uh, nobody's complaining about how crossbows function in WoW, because nobody actually cares about realism in their fantasy MMORPG, but... They... I think that people do care about realism to an extent, but to the extent that the realism holds them back from being able to enjoy something that they think is cool, then they don't like it down the line, I think a lot of dwarves would appreciate this as a feature, because I, for one, even though I don't main a dwarf, would much rather be holding a meaty, thick, throbbing crossbow and squirting that in I the agree. face of I my like mistress instead more. of some flimsy cooler. piece of wood designed for the frail hands of those dirty knife ears. But as usual, I am just one nerd desperate for a good MMO, and my opinion means nothing without yours. In the comments below and uh, whilst i was editing this video and putting that alpha one footage back to back with the recent alpha two showcases mm -hmm. it gave me an idea for another thin air video showing off how far the game has come in just that one year that's a very good idea he should show the entire duration though not just the one year because the entire duration paints a better picture Period. So uh, let me know if you guys would it's be good interested idea. in seeing that. As always, I want to thank my patrons. <laughs> Without your support, uh, this uh, balding, uh, middle-aged man wouldn't be able to live his dream of talking shit on the internet. If you've made it to the end of the video, surely it's worth giving a like. And if you're a sad, depressed, lonely, overweight, balding, <laughs> emotionally stunted loser like me, why not go ahead and subscribe? And I'll see you in the next one because... You're high on Topium. There it is. 
So I do have to say, I, I, I have to say, it's not that big of a deal in my mind that they're not going to have crossbows. Like, I don't really give a fuck about that. Like, it's not a big deal. Who cares? Of And in a way, like, maybe this is me. Maybe this is a silver lining type thing. But it's sometimes it's kind of good to say, and I said this whenever they scaled back the amount of nodes. It's like the fact that they are no longer just saying yes to everything means that the ideas that they have are much more formed. They know what they have, which means that they know what they don't have. And again, it's a, it, this is going to be a live service game that is being created and developed over the course of its entire lifespan. So just because a game doesn't have crossbows in on release doesn't mean it's never going to have them. Like Demon Hunters took a long time to go into WoW. Let's see, what other new things came in a while? Glaives. We had, like, kind of, we had the War Glaives and Burning Crusade. We didn't have any War Glaives in Vanilla WoW. Uh, there were tons of things. Yeah, Death Knights. We didn't have those either. Death Knights were in Warcraft 1 and Warcraft, I know they were in Warcraft 2. I don't know if they are in Warcraft 1. But they were 100% in Warcraft 1. So, yeah, Flying Mounts. Every game, like New World, think about all the shit that we didn't have with New World. Like New World released, it did not have the Great Sword. It did not have, I don't think it had the Void Gauntlet. It didn't have the Blunderbuss. Uh, it didn't have, I think there's one other weapon that it didn't have. But uh, yeah, it didn't have content. Yeah. So just add more content as the game comes out. That's okay. I think this is a pretty decent video, and I'm glad to see uh, glad to see Narc still making videos about the game. And again, any time that somebody uh, you know is tripped up at all uh, by a question, everybody always tries to lose hope and get upset about it. But I don't really think it's that big of a deal. Uh, you know, I'm just I just want to see the game. I just want to play the game, and whenever it's ready, it's ready. Until then, I will just keep watching other games and playing other games, and I don't really give a fuck. Because I'm playing other stuff and I'm not worried about it. And that's a good place to be in. There might be hardcore realms in Classic WoW. Um, as of just earlier today, there was a big data mining operation. I think this was posted originally. No, okay, so I, I heard Mr. GM talking about this, but it's posted by... I just reported the stream. <laughs> Some guy just randomly is reporting stay safe. What the fuck did he do? Solanya underscore on Twitter. Hashtag Warcraft 10.1 PTR has a pop-up for, quote, hardcore, hardcore. realms Ooh. in its interface code. Global strings don't exist, so no details. Uh -huh. But there are warnings on realm selection and character creation. So this is data mined Hardcore from the 10.1, which is the upcoming Hardcore retail wow second build. warning. Can I get this image to be a bit bigger here? Uh, yeah, let me put on my hacker goggles. Okay. I hope that they don't do the shit they did with Diablo 3, and they do what Path of Exile does with Hardcore, is that after you lose your character in D3, this is how it used to be, I don't know if it is still, it's, it's gone, it's deleted, it's dead, you'll never get it back, you can never log on to it again. In PoE, if you die with your character that's hardcore, it just respawns in softcore, and that's it. It's done. Uh, I think that's what they should do. Okay. Um, so, equals hardcore underscore pop-ups underscore screen realm select. Realm select mm -hmm. hardcore pop-up screen. And then also character select hardcore pop-up screen. So, Blizzard is like, Second ladies warning. and gentlemen... Yeah. We have heard the desire for official, hardcore World of Warcraft realms. Thank so God. So with the upcoming Dragonflight patch, we are offering hardcore, hardcore Dragonflight. Dragonflight. <laughs> hardcore Dragonflight could mean multiple things. And based off of how some of the devs animate the dragons, it could be either one. <laughs> for all of the hardcore dragonfly enthusiasts here at yeah. Blizzard, we've heard your we've heard your desires. Uh -huh. No, so I would I would uh, do that. That would be that would be like the the most Blizzard thing that they possibly could do. That would be, I wouldn't even be mad. I would I would uh, I would be that'd be hilarious. I would laugh so hard yeah. if they did that. That's a good prank. They you know what they should do? They should wait until April first. They should wait until April first. 
and for and for one day they should bring up uh, the hardcore Dragonflight realms, and then on April. I would love if they did that, where they were talking about hardcore Dragonflight realms, and the only mounts you can ride in the Dragonflight realms are other dragons, and make it sound like it's a scaly furry server, and just completely go all in on the meme. Just be like, yeah, so it's like you can truly, you know, live out your fantasy of being a dragon. And it's like all these other fucking weird things in the game. Yeah, absolutely. I always love whenever companies do really stupid shit. Because it makes me realize that there are real people working there. Second, they uh, they offer the hardcore classic realms. Okay, that's like the best April Fools of all time. That would be hilarious. Yeah. And you know, you know, people would be melting down. They'd be having an absolute total meltdown on the. They floor. could just open the hardcore realms on April Fools, and then close them on April second. <laughs> just fucking close the realm. You can't log in anymore. <laughs> like, whoa, it's a hardcore realm. You're gonna lose your character anyway. What are you mad about? and everywhere they'd be pissed off be savage hilarious. as fuck yeah okay anyway hilarious. so um so okay so what do we what's the takeaway from this this is this is all that it is by the way the, i think the takeaway yeah. is blizzard is aware that people want uh uwu blizzard is aware that people want hardcore realms um i think i think that actually i think at this point classic wow like runs off of a sidelined uh it's like a side shoot of the retail client so yeah. i think a lot of the times, if something happens in retail, it can be segued over to the classic client. Like, I think it's almost effectively the same client in a lot of ways. Um, it's sort of, it's like retrofitted for classic WoW rather than retail. So, um, I, I would not be mad about this. You're like, oh man, I wish it was for classic. It, pr it probably is. This is probably for classic. Nobody wants to play hardcore Dragonflight. Nobody. This is probably they're not they're probably not doing hardcore yeah, uh, dragons. For, and if they are, they're probably doing them in in addition to hardcore classic. But I would at this point, if I was a betting man and I was on my way to Vegas, I would put a hundred grand on hardcore classic realms within a year. Oh, time frame. Um, I'd say a year. Twelve. Twelve. I'll say twelve months to be safe. Yeah. But I I would say probably six months. I'm gonna I would say six months. I think it's going to be longer because I'm expecting them to do a season of mastery like within six to eight months or sorry, six to 12 months. I think that's about when it's going to happen. I would, I would put a hundred grand on 12 months. I'd put 50 grand on six months. There's okay? no shot. I I'm not quite as sure about six. that, but I'd still put money. No on six way. Months. I, I think we'll have wrong. hardcore classic realms within six months and stuff like this is very, very, very reassuring, very mm -hmm. reassuring. I mean, you like, you guys can see there's a big desire for vanilla. Wow. Again, you see vanilla. Yes. Wow <clears throat> private service are yes. popping off right now. A lot of people, a lot of buzz for vanilla wow private service True. Are popping off right now. You see a huge movement of people that are playing on the hardcore classic era servers. Uh, the hardcore classic era servers have actually shifted over the last month and a half from low pop up medium. to medium pop. Yeah. They're getting close to high pop also. So a lot of people. People like classic WoW. It's just that simple. Classic WoW is an MMO in a way that even Burning Crusade is not. It is playing vanilla again for some and, of us and you know what happened i tell you one thing is as soon as they brought out old war everybody went back to fucking vanilla because they thought they had a big dick they went over there they did member on hard mode they said fuck this let's go back to molten core this is ridiculous so our favorite flavor is vanilla so yeah think about that this is very good this is in my mind interesting this is timing all this is 99% of a confirmation that we're going to get Hardcore Realms. Absolutely. Do you guys agree? It's not a, it's not a total, a hey guys, Blizzard here, we're Without doing Hardcore Realms, doubt. but it's like 99% of that. 100. It's, it's there. It's happening soon at oh, some yeah. point. Absolutely. 99% of the way. And that's, and that's not copium, okay? That is, I'm telling you guys, like, I remember explaining Nether Spite, and there's like some fucking like, you know, 36-year-old dad. He's sitting there with his big fucking beard, and, you know, he's wearing his now his prescription glasses. He's got two fucking kids crying in the back. The wife is screaming at him. She's like, get off that fucking game. You've been on that fucking game all day. You know, yelling at him. And he's like, See, he's like okay, so the blue beam. Oh, fuck. Okay, so I have to be in the blue beam. But then, oh, man, which one is aggro again? 
Oh, God, is it the green one? Oh, I think Asma wants me to go in the... Oh, I'm kicked. Oh, my God. Yeah, honey, I'll be there in a minute. Fuck. God, I gotta... Uh, just a minute. Let me message him. Yeah, calm ball. I, I, yeah, all right, I'm done. I'm, I'm on my way. And that's it. No, really? Like, even Burning Crusade was hard. Classic WoW was very popular because it was fucking easy. That's why Wrath was popular, too, at the beginning. It's because Nax was a joke. Truium. Is that, a, is that an element? That's the new element on the elemental table. That's Truium. Yeah. It's one of the noble, it's one of the most noble gases. Truium. It's not Copium, okay? Oh, no, anyway, of course Anyway, uh, there's the news. Big exciting news. That's Poggers in the chat news. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Goodbye. Uh, I think that's fair. Yeah, I just wanted to look and see for that because... I am not really surprised about this at all because a lot of people just want to be able to play Vanilla WoW. What a fucking surprise. People like Vanilla WoW, just like everybody said they would. And yes, I think that Classic WoW will be uh, will continue to, to retain players. The game takes so long to level to 60. It's one of the only MMOs that there is actually... A game before max level and and like a substantial game that has like value like for example Final Fantasy you play through the game but there is never a point where if you're playing Final Fantasy correctly your health will go under 90% at least I haven't seen it yet the game is fucking easy leveling up is fucking easy so it's like there's no real reason to get gear. There's no reason to level professions. There's no reason to enchant your gear. But in Classic WoW, there is because the game is such a fucking cock. It's such a big fucking cock that you've got to deal with all of these little stupid things at like level 21. What are you going to do at level 21? You ran out of quests in, in the fucking Westlands. Or, what? yeah, Westland, Westfall. And, and you're in Red Ridge, but then half of the mobs in Red Ridge are red. The other half are green. There's, like, three orcs that you can kill. And they spawn all three at the same time, and they kill you. Yes, you're going to run dead mines 50 times. And, and whenever you get that Taskmaster Axe, the Illusionary Rod, the Cruel Barb... You're gonna you're gonna know and you're gonna be able to tell the difference. Okay? So yeah, I I, I think absolutely vanilla wow. That's why it has so uh uh it, it has so much potential and so much longevity. That's what it is. I'm gonna link you guys to video. It's a stay safe video. We know stay safe. We've known stay safe for a very long time. We've known stay safe ever since like 2017. It's actually crazy to think about how fucking long that's been. Holy shit, it's been a while. Rare items definitely dropping feels good. Yeah, I remember like my friend in original Vanilla WoW had a kaleidoscope train chain drop and she bought a mount with it. And I was like, where the fuck is my rare item? Where where are my rare items? Because I didn't get anything good. But I actually got a Hyacinth Macaw in Vanilla WoW and I vendored it. Yeah. That's right. I didn't know what it was. I thought it was just another one of those stupid birds. I already have one of these. I don't need another one. Why do I need two birds? Fucking vendored the bitch. This is an easy win for Blizzard if it actually happens. As somebody who is not a hardcore enjoyer. Hardcore World of Warcraft enjoyer. I hope they do hardcore servers. There is obviously a large community of people who enjoy the game on hardcore. They are having a lot of fun playing the game that way. Why not make something for them? It's so easy. I don't know. I think it'd be great. I hope so. I remember agreeing both parts of Salt Rays and ZF Vanilla. Oh, so you remember being a fucking idiot because the weapon sucked and you were able to just get the Ice Barb Spear at level 51 and it was a thousand times better in every single way, but you had to use the other item because it was purple and shiny? Yeah, you fucking idiot. 
Yeah, yeah, I know. You're probably like 12. Okay, I read the numbers. Ice Barb Spear was way better. It's a thousand times better.